well as y'all can see i just hit 29.3 miles an hour and this is with a loaded boat with two people and by loaded i mean a cooler that is slap full a coleman grill full tackle box i have two 12 pound anchors the interstate battery back here. Don't say a large wife. Yeah, and a very skinny 100 pound <laughs> wife. Uh, 13 gallon gas tank, I upgraded that to the large size. Two interstate deep cycle batteries, 24 volt trolling motor, safety gear up there, uh, paddles, rods and reels, bimini tops, you name it. Uh, I've got junk all in here, more safety gear, bug spray. This boat is absolutely loaded down and that's the way I'm gonna give numbers empty i'm just guessing this boat would probably run 33 34 all day long um i'm just not ever going to run it that way i know this boat will do better than the 29.3 i just showed you because we went out the other day took my wife and her mother and had probably at least this much weight in the boat if not a little more we had the cooler packed down and even more gear brought with us and i hit 29.6 miles an hour that day so I'm still in the experimental stages. Uh, mud boats are, are very picky about weight distribution. I guess I need to play around with this a little more. I could probably move some more weight forward, backwards. I got to figure out what works the best. And no doubt in my mind, I think I can hit 30 plus with two people in there. Uh, chances are, if you get one of these boats, you're not gonna load it down with 24 volt trolling motor and extra deep cycle batteries and an extra large gas tank like I did. I run really long stretches of river i like to fish up current so that's why i wanted the extra battery extra trolling motor power um i'm pushing this with the 40 horse i'm going to do this review over a couple different days so that's why you may see me wearing different stuff or talking about some of the same stuff i would just want to run a couple different places uh, show you what all it would do but several y'all have asked for this uh, so it's the 40 horse tiller with the old standard two blade prop no work done to it nothing it's the 1848 gator tail boat this is the model that's got the welded on pointed bows i think they call it timber series drop deck i've also got the welded in rear seat so there's some extra weight oh i forgot to mention i got a bimini top on the boat so it's it's absolutely loaded down so hopefully this is going to give uh some of y'all that's been asking for some information on this boat some real world figures you know a lot of people run these slap empty give you these crazy speeds and then once you load them down you realize that's just not the case but uh you know, I'm hitting close to 30 miles an hour, fully loaded down with two people. I'm, I'm well pleased with that. And I know I can play with some weight distribution and probably hit 30 plus, but on these super shallow rocky rivers, I see no need to run any faster than that. And uh, by the way, that 29.6 miles an hour that I hit the other day with three people in the boat, that was on deep water on the Wakula River. So um, I'm, the majority of the figures I'm going to give you is going to be on deeper water. That's what I typically run. This is probably the shallowest river that I run right here. Some rock bottom, some mud bottom, but it varies in depth. Majority of it's probably one to two foot deep. Some holes are 10, 15 foot deep. So it's uh, it's kind of all over the place. But I'll run it some more, include some more clips, probably give you a walk around in the water, maybe give you a walk around at the house where it's not so loaded down with junk. Like I said, I'm going to spread this review out a few days and make sure I'm giving you my my real review real input on it um so you can make a decision if this is something you want to purchase well here we are at one of our little local hangouts and i excuse the or excuse the mess in the boat but hey this is how i'm giving my review loaded down like i said real world numbers let me just give you a look from the outside i'll explain a few things that i've done again it's got the uh the new marine vanguard 40 supposedly the marine means i don't know if it's the connections are what stainless exhaust it's just got the standard two blade gator tail prop i added a uh, boarding ladder to it we we do a lot of swimming we're, we're water babies constantly in the water so that's something i want to add i reinforced it underneath with some quarter inch aluminum plate to give it some extra strength there if uh you're not familiar with the new xd model gator tails it's uh they come with a new handle you can either get twist grip or i've got the regular squeeze throttle and uh it's real convenient i've got still got a copper head that's a lot stiffer than this and i was afraid this was going to be stiff but it's it's real easy do it one finger got your forward neutral reverse switch your trim up and down 
So uh, in all honesty, it runs just like a regular outboard. It really does to me. I was afraid that this was gonna have a lot of tiller torque and just kind of be tough on me. Cause I'd always heard horror stories of the uh, larger motors having a lot of tiller torque. And while it does have a little, it is not bad at all. I can comfortably sit down and run it, stand up and run it. No problem whatsoever. This model right here already came with the upgraded welded in boxes. It's what my dealer had. Wasn't sure if I wanted them to begin with. I wanted to save that money. But now that I have them, I am so glad that I have them. Here's quite a bit of storage in there. They're nice and gasketed. They drain overboard or drain inside into the hole. But there's a lot of room in there. Added a uh, Garmin Echo Map, one with the lake view in it. There's a couple big lakes around here that this covers. Got my GPS on there as well. Still got to mount my transducer, I've yet to do that. Added a bimini top, a must in Florida. You know, it's it's been 90 to 100 degrees for the last week and a half, two weeks, every single day. It's miserable. And these boats do get hot. I may do hydro turf later on, but uh, I do. I do like having the bim and it keeps it cool in there. And again, excuse all the junk. Hey, we're out on the river having fun today. Kind of give you an idea of the amount of room inside as well. Once you pile it full of junk, cooler, like I said, tackle box. And of course, I could move all this around and just got it in the shade right now. We got this idea to put my wife's zero gravity chair in here and that wound up being a fantastic boat seat. It does take up a little bit of room, but uh, very comfortable. You can lay back, take a nap, ride down the river comfortably. So that's just a good idea. And you could really fit two of them side by side. Put some padding on the bottom to keep from marring up the floor. A couple of uh, Group 27, I believe. Either 27 or 29 interstate deep cycle batteries. Had the dealer upgrade me to the 13 gallon tank because I thought these would use a lot more fuel than they do. They do not. We ran the other day, I bet you every bit of 40, no, probably close to 60 miles over two days. And I think I might have put, it wasn't even quite four gallons in this boat. So if you're ever wondering, you could get away with a six gallon tank. The one thing I do like about the gray 13 gallon tank over that big bright red bubble, I do duck hunt. So that's one less thing to have to cover up. I added the 24 volt Minn Kota Maximum on here. Absolutely love this. Very quiet for 24 volt, very powerful. No need to run it on high. It pulls this boat up these swift current rivers like this on speed six. This has that variable speed. Last all day long. I go home, the batteries charge very quickly. Got an onboard plug-in charger in there. That was another upgraded option. I've added some LED lights. Got a stick it pole over there. I'm gonna be uh, building me a rod mount here in a little bit out of aluminum that I can clamp my stick it pole and paddle to as well as clamp some rods in there to kind of make things uh, a little less cluttered they come from the factory very nicely wired it comes with extra switches and this may not seem like a lot to y'all but i thought it was nice having on a bunch of boats in my life when i pulled the front running lights out to wire up my led lights i was dreading the task of having to run wires front or rear well they had already ran me two extra wires up there it was right in the switch panel. All I had to do was hook them up. So that, that says a lot to me for a dealer to take the time to run extra. That only cost them a couple bucks extra, but you'd be surprised how many dealers won't run you even a piece of rope to pull wires. They just run what they run from the factory and that's it. So I do appreciate that. All the wires neatly tucked and covered, loom tube. The boat also come with the, uh, I think this is natural gear. This is the timber cambo. Uh, it's just how the dealer had it ordered. I kind of like it now that I've got it. Otherwise, they just come like a plain kind of tan colored. Added four anchor cleats to it. That's about all I can think of offhand. Still have a few more things planned in mind down the road, but uh, this covers me very well for fishing, for hanging out on the river like we're doing. I mean, you can look at these spots that we get to. It's just a few inches deep, but absolutely gorgeous. Now we run it through areas like this right here it's the only access point down this river there's an old man-made dam here 
and it's very shallow right there. You can actually bump rocks pretty easy, not very wide. So y'all can see why I was pretty adamant on sticking with a 48 inch wide boat. Uh, even narrower spots down river than this. So this is the kind of stuff we run. This is why I can justify a mud boat. The only other thing that really runs this river comfortably would be an airboat. And some people ask me on a 48 wide boat versus 54. Only advice I can give you is you, it, it's, I'll say a little tipsy, but I don't feel like I'm gonna get thrown out or it's gonna flip. But you can see how it's already leaning one side with the, with the where the batteries are on one side. But they did my dealer set it up just like that purposely. So whenever I sit on this side, it balances out very well. If you're concerned about a boat being a little tipsy, if you're gonna have several grown adults in here, I would say go with the 54 wide boat. I do not regret going to 48 because these narrow rivers that I run. I've already had three people in here. It's comfortable. Just whatever they're sitting on in the middle, you might have to move one of the chairs out of the way if you want to walk front to rear once you get where you're going. That's no big deal with these chairs that fold up. So just keep that in mind. A 54 wide or even a 60 wide boat is going to carry a load better. A narrower boat, from what all I read, is uh, going to run a little faster. I'll include a few more shots running the river. If uh, you have any more questions on the boat, the package, some of the rivers I run, drop me a comment.